Hi everybody! This is my very first live stream, I think, on my Facebook for Studio Artology, and I'm really excited. Um, give me just a second to make sure I've got everything up here. Sorry, I'm trying to, to get over to my other profile here so I can share this. There we are. Okay. Alright, well hopefully my sound is okay and everything looks good. So, hi everybody. My name is Jacqueline and I uh, am the artist behind Studio Artology and this is my first uh, live stream on Facebook. Um, I'm only doing this because I'm really excited so I am currently uh, helping out Art Attack Studio LLC uh, in St. Joe. We, um, Annie is the owner and she's amazing um, she's super sweet and she's been really nice um, with helping me with these classes that she is um, wanting to continue doing. Uh, Nat, wow. Um, anyway, um, I, I'm going to be teaching art and crafts to uh, pre-K kids on Tuesdays and kindergarten through second grade kids on Mondays and so I've got some crafts here that I'm going to go over for this coming week and hopefully we can share this on her page so that we can get some interest because this week we did some fun Easter baskets but I didn't have anybody show up so it was just my daughter with me and that was fine. Um, Eleanor absolutely loved doing it to help me out and uh, she had a blast. So I'm going to show you what I've already got and so for the pre-K kids this coming week, which will be, what what day is that going to be? Oh my goodness. I just want to look at the calendar. I don't know how to work this anymore. Anyway. Um, this coming week, which is going to be... Oh, April 10th and 11th, I think. Okay, so the pre-K kids is going to be April 11th, which is going to be Tuesday. The classes start at noon and run until 3 p.m. You can show up at any time um, during those hours. You do have to pre-register for these, but you can pay at the door. Uh, and you'll do that through the Art Attack um, website. Um, but the... Uh, and the... Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. I keep getting distracted. It's been a while since I've done a, a live, um, live video. So, the pre-K kids, um, we are going to be doing a weather theme for this coming week. And what we're going to be doing is going to be really fun. We're going to be practicing mixing some colors. And then, depending on the skill level of the kids that I have, we're going to have two different options. So, we're going to be looking at thunderstorms, and we're going to be looking at lightning and rain. And for the two different uh, skill levels here, we have some pre-cut out lightning strikes and water droplets that we can glue to the page. Or we have some blue and yellow paint that we can paint on. This all de just depends. Um, I'm going to have both available. We're just going to kind of let the kids choose which they would like to do, and that is fun. So, um, what this is going to be studying, okay, we're going to have white paint, we're going to have black paint, and we're going to be studying how to mix paints so that we can get gray. And we're going to just kind of swirl it around on the page. We're going to have a whole lot of fun just making our clouds in the sky. Um, and then we're going to 
put our lightning strikes and our water droplets on for our thunderstorm. But you can't have spring and rain without rainbows. So once we get this done, we're going to have some pre-cut out rainbow shapes. We're going to color them with our rainbow going all the way across. And then we're going to take our um, rainbow colored yarn and we're going to wrap it around. And this one I actually haven't finished because I didn't have any cotton balls at the studio at the time uh, when I was working on this. So this, of course, you're just going to have some glue. I set this down. don't have full use of my hand here. I'm going to tear apart cotton ball. And these are going to be, the rainbows are going to be much bigger. Um, this was just a little test one to make sure that it was going to work. So, and I don't have any glue with me either, so I'm just going to be using some tape. Sometimes you just have to make do, and that's, that's fine. I do have glue, I just don't feel like going downstairs to get it. So I'm just going to put some tape on here. And I can always glue it down later, if I really want to. And this, these two crafts are going to be for my pre-K kids. These are going to be for my, I think we're, we're doing, um, oh, you know what, I'm putting that on the wrong side there. Let's put it over here. We're going to be, uh, I think we're offering this for kind of any age, uh, maybe three to five pre-K. Okay, so we're going to have our fluff here and we're going to stick it on to the bottom of our our rainbows and I like this a lot this is a lot of fun for me to do uh, and like I said it's going to be bigger and I'm going to use poster board instead of cardboard but when I'm doing these mock-ups I kind of do uh, a little bit smaller scale than what I want to do with the kids mainly because I'm going to be doing it again anyway and it's going to be a lot of fun but uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not um, using up all of my supplies before getting around to having the kids do this. And just because I want to, I'm going to put fluff on both sides of my rainbow so that it is actually sitting in the clouds. And I always like to try and pair my crafts to like a book or a song or a video so I'll probably have some sort of book or I'll have uh, something some type of YouTube video or something I can play some stormy music well we make this look how cute that is uh, I love this idea this is so adorable so for our pre-k kids on Tuesday this is what we're going to be doing for our thunderstorm and weather theme. And I love this. Love, love, love this. Okay. So that's a lot of fun. And takes, I don't know, uh, about 45 minutes to do both of those um, myself. So may, or maybe 30 minutes to do both of those myself. Um, so with the kids and with help, about a 45 minute craft uh, for both of those. Maybe a little longer if the kiddo kiddos need a little bit more help and that is fine. I'm there to help, I'm there to ask questions and I'm really excited so I'm really hoping that I get some kids for this one. Um, Annie has been working really hard on her studio. The studio is a glorious mess and I love it so much. Um, it's on 8th Street and it's amazing. Um, if you haven't been there, you really should look up the Facebook page. I think I have it tagged in my description here, and I want to make sure that you know everybody is uh, definitely visiting her page because yes, this is my personal art page, um, and this is where I'm doing my live stream because I control this page. Um, but yeah, I, I I would love to do this more often while I'm doing my my planning and stuff because it's a lot of fun. Okay, so for my bigger kids, for my kindergarten, first grade, and second grade kids. This one's going to be really exciting. <clears throat> and the reason why this is really exciting to me is because I made this one up. I had a dream when I was trying to like plan my themes. I had a dream about this craft, okay? And I'm really excited because I actually made it work. 
and a dream about it. I wrote it down, and then I just did, never did anything with it until yesterday, and I'm so, so excited that it worked. Okay, so here's my prototype. Are you ready? So we're going to be still talking about color, but we're going to be talking about the color wheel, and it's still going to be mixing too. I think we're going to do paint on these instead of marker, but I haven't quite decided yet. We're just going to have to see how many kids we have, and I'll play it by ear. But this is the one that I made yesterday. We have our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Uh, we also have some hidden ones in here that are folded under because it did not work exactly the way I was planning. So, <laughs> we have an umbrella! And it's a little wobbly, but I'm going to hopefully fix that today with the new one. So, I wanted to do a live stream so that you guys can watch me make this and maybe help me make it better. I don't know. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. What you need to make this, if you want to follow along, you can. Um, we have paper. We have straws, bendy straws, and we have yarn and tape. That is, that's it. You can decorate it however you want, and that's awesome. Uh, I, I would like to do some mixing with this one too, uh, since that's what we are kind of focusing on with the littles. Uh, so I will probably do paint, but I don't want to mess up the paper, so I, I don't know how that would work. Everything's an experiment with art, which is why my page is called Studio Artology, the study of art, the science behind art. How does it work? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so to start, these straws. I have three straws here. They're all bendy straws. You need scissors. You need tape. You need paper. You need yarn. <laughs> okay. Any color yarn, obviously, it doesn't matter for this one. Um, I'm actually going to be following a tutorial with no sound over here um, to fold a hexagon from a square. Uh, Paper Dojo is the name of the YouTube channel. Sam's Origami, I guess, is the person here. I don't know for sure, but first we have to start with a square. So, I have a normal piece of printer paper, and uh, you need to make a square. So, the golden rule of art is this piece of paper, pretty much. You have a ratio of 1 to 1.6 something or 1.8 something. Um, I can't remember. And if you make a line, you should be able to make a square and a rectangle with the same dimensions. I don't remember exactly. And maybe I'm not making any sense at all. I might not be. Very possible. But anyway, we need to make a square. So, we're going to take this corner down and we're going to match it Maybe. And match it up to this side. Oop. It's not very matched. And we're going to crease it. And guess what? That makes it a square. I know it looks like a triangle, but it's actually a square. Okay? Um. Whatever you have left over here, this, this long piece down here, we're going to actually, I'm just going to fold it over what I just folded down, um, and then I'm going to cut it off. Um, just folding it to make that line so that I can keep track. So, now I'm going to cut across this line here. And you know, looking at this paper, I think I was talking at him. Uh, out of my head on um, the golden rule of using this paper. kind of still stands, um, but as far as rate, the actual ratio goes, I don't think it's accurate. <laughs> okay. So, we have our square. So now, I'm going to watch this video and I'm going to follow along with it as best that I can without any sound, because I can't link the, the video over here. Um, okay, so... Starting off, 
he's got it both of these sides creased. Hmm. Should be a perfect square. It is not, though. My cutting skills were way off. I just didn't cut right on the uh, crease, I don't guess. There we go. Now then we have perfect square. Alright. Okay. And I'll walk you guys through it as much as I can. So he... I'm already lost. See? Following this without sound. Okay. So he has it like this, and then he has it also folded like top to bottom. And then again like this to have all those creases. I'm gonna rewind this a little bit here. And I will share the link to this on the uh, in the comments of this live stream. Once I get done with this. Okay. So yes, we want our page to look like this. Folded in every direction here. Okay. He's folding it into the triangle. Okay. He's taking this side up to the center. And then taking this down to that. Okay. Yeah. And he's not creasing all the way here. He's only doing... He did this, and then he brought that down, and then creased to there. And then he took a pencil, which I don't have over here, but I do have right here. Um, and he drew... lines and I really should have like closed caption on here okay so kind of hard to see but we have two lines here a little further than we just made okay okay nice folding this one up and over. Okay. Oh goodness. This is really hard to do. Okay. So we had our two lines here. He is folding to where this line meets up with this line, which I'm going to do here on the table. And then he draws the line. So we have this and this. We're folding that up to meet there. Okay. And now, okay, now we're flipping it. And I think, okay, yep, now we're gonna just flip it on over here. And we're gonna line it all up to make it look the same on both sides here. Whoa, mine does not look the same as his. Okay, 
So maybe I went too far. Not far enough. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's grab that. And put it right there. And then flip it and do the same on the other side. Yeah, okay, so I think what I did is I just didn't fold it quite far enough. Okay, so now that's fairly equal there. Alright, let's see. What do we got now? Okay. So now he is taking this and he is splitting it. Okay. This is very odd trying to do it this way. Okay. So this bit, he took the two corner pieces that are in the middle here, split them in half, and folded it down to where it would line up to the corners. And I don't know if I said this, but I'm trying to make a hexagon here, because that's what I need. So let me double check here. And then I think he just cuts right on that line. Yeah. Okay. That's not too hard now that I understand what I'm doing. I don't know that I even necessarily need to do that last one. Alright. Yay! It worked! Alright, awesome. So now we have a hexagon, which is great. Alright. So now, I'm going to make the umbrella shape out of the hexagon. I'm going to do this differently, actually. I'm going to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Alright, come on now. There we go. Okay. Now then, you should have a six-sided umbrella shape. You sure do. Look at that. Cool. And throw the rest of that away. Okay. So now, we have our six sides here. This is really exciting. Okay, I don't need that anymore. So in the center, I'm going to kind of talk to myself for a second, in the center I want a little circle to show me the center of this. Um, and I might even do one of these numbers here. And mark the center. Don't cut it, though. That's what I did on the first one, and I did not actually need to do that at all. I am just marking the center here with my pencil on the very top. Okay. Now, I know that doesn't do the whole thing, but it shows me where the two triangles meet is the center. Okay. So, now then... Six sides. We 
have our red, of course, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Violet. However you want to look at it. I'm not going to color it on stream right now. Um, I am just going to try and build the contraption to see if I can make it better than the other one. To do that, I'm going to start with one straw. On this one, I... Let's see if I can show you here. On the inside of here, I have straw, straws taped, but they need to be up higher so that it doesn't wiggle around as much, I think. So, whoops, I'm going to cut my straws, and I, I don't know exactly how many I'm going to need yet, that's why I'm kind of testing this right now. I'm going to cut this straw, I'm going to do right below the bendy part here, and then right above the bendy part, and that's what we're going to use to measure. Alright, so... Of course, be ready to catch these. should give me about four. See, if you don't catch it, it does that. <laughs> okay, so we need six of these. This one's a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it. You don't have to, though. Okay. So, I need two more. I'm going to do two more with the blue here. I should show you how I'm cutting this. So I'm lining it up and just cutting it like that. Okay, so that should give me six. Okay. Ah! Six pieces of straw. Now we need our tape. Okay, so the first time I did this, I messed up and I had to redo it. So if you're looking at this, right, and you are seeing an umbrella shape, like this, right? We want all of these to be our like outer folds, where the um, metal, call them spokes, because I don't know what else to call them, will go. See, now that I've done that, it looks more like an umbrella. In between that is what we want to fold down. So, when we flip it over to where it's an upside down umbrella, we actually want to put our straws on the part that we want to fold down. And you want them to be kind of in the middle where the string is, you know, pulling the whole thing, but it's also, um, the string is ending at the top. Well, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So, right here is our center. There's where the string is going to go. And we can take the string at the end right here, after we feed it through. So that's what I'm going to do with the other straws uh, on the inside of each one.
I'm really excited to see what this looks like. Compared to the one that I did yesterday. And I don't think that these need to be perfect by any means. Um, maybe not even the size of the straw matters, but I do think the placement matters quite a bit when it comes to the top part of the straw. Because it gets all wiggly if you don't have it um, placed properly. And show you again what I mean. Because the straw doesn't go all the way up to the top of the umbrella. Okay. So that's what we have now. Those are all going to be the inner part of our umbrella. So now, I want to get some string. You can use string, you can use yarn, you can use anything. Uh, yarn is... To me, the cheapest option, so that's the one I'm going to use. And cut off just a, a pretty long piece here. And then I'm going to do so the way I did this one is I just cut pieces that went all the way across and then tied one to it. And I think that's a good way to do it. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do again. This part can be kind of frustrating, so you're going to feed it through your straws. You're going to start at one end and go through to the other. And yarn especially can be really frustrating with this because it frays at the end and it doesn't want to go where you want it to go and it snags on everything and it can be really frustrating. Okay, so you see where I've got it fed through now, all the way to the end. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to, I don't want to stretch it, I don't think. I just want to cut it, and then I'm going to use that to measure, measure the rest. So I'm actually going to take that back out, and I'm going to use it to measure how far across I need to go for all of them, because I want them all to be the same. And we need three pieces of this length. And I'm not going to say a specific length because it really depends on how big of a piece of paper you used. Okay. Now then, we're going to feed it back through. And I know you guys can't see what I'm doing while I'm doing it, but it's okay. Alright, I fed it through, flat on the table. I'm going to tape down the ends. And then I will continue with my other two pieces and put it through. You can go above or below the one that you just did, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, this part can be really frustrating, but it's doable. I'm really excited to see if this way works better than the other way. I'm still kind of experimenting here. I, I don't really know what to expect. All right, and the last piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the end of this one because it's going to be annoying to get through the other side with the other ones in the middle there. And I want to try to do this so you guys can see it. There we go. And then take. Okay. Okay, so this is what we have now. Our colors are on this side. Our straws are on the like inner bend of our 
umbrella and our strings are going all the way across. So now what I want to do is we have a lot left and that's, I mean, just because of how much I did there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it through all of the ones that are in the middle. This is underneath all of the ones that are in the middle. Kind of like this, like you're hanging it upside down. I'm going to pull it all the way down. And I am going to tie it. And the only thing that you want to make sure you do on this is you want to make sure you give yourself enough to get through another straw. Alright, so now I've got that tied. It's not going anywhere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off my excess so I don't need it. And then I'm going to tape the end, make an aglet, like what you find in the little plastic or metal piece at the end of your shoelace. This will just help us get it through the um, straw a little easier. Make sure it's kind of tight. And we have a little aglet. Now we're going to take this straw. This part can be extremely frustrating. gonna feed it through best as we can kind of squeezing the straw at the top when I need to regrip so it doesn't fall back out kind of helps if you can use gravity a little bit also help if you had you know more than two hands <laughs> a little bit more difficult to do. Sometimes it helps, not all the time, to like move the straw around. See there, it dropped down quite a bit. And let's try and squeeze it in just a little bit more. Yeah, doing that seems to help that aglet get through there a lot better. Should be just about there. Ah, there it is. Ah, no, come back. There we go. All the way up. Hey, so now I've got my straw all the way up to the top there. wiggly I think but it'll be better okay so now what I want to do I want to pull the bendy part out that's why you want to give yourself plenty of room because this is our little our little handle here Ta -da! okay and then I'm gonna bring these apart and bring them around it and for right now, I'm just going to kind of wrap it around because I don't want it to go back up the straw until I figure out how I want to do this. Okay, so I'm going to hold it. Now I just want to make sure that all of the pieces that I want to be bending in are bending in and the pieces I want to be bending out are bending out. Again, this would be really nice to have... Um, more than two hands. <laughs> That's alright. Make do. Okay. 
And I'm just going around the edge and making my umbrella. Lining up where the spokes will be. I keep calling them spokes, don't know what to call them. And just giving a super point at the end there. There we have a little umbrella. And now I can come back to this and unwrap it. And it is a little wiggly still. I don't know if I can stop that really. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think. Hmm. So I think my only concern here. I need to give myself more room on the yarn that goes across so that it can be pulled in. Because I can straighten this out and flip it upside down if I want to. Um, but I can't really bring it in without having more room. And I would really like to be able to bring it in that far. So I think my only thing that I want to change is how much string I have up there at the top. But I will tell you, I am so excited that this thing worked. Um, and then all you have to do is, if you want to just hold it there so it doesn't go anywhere, I like to just take a little piece of tape and uh, tape it around. Drop my tape on the floor, because why not? And then we have a little umbrella. And I think it's really cute, and you can make this out of construction paper or really anything, and I'm sure there are a hundred and one tutorials um, and a whole bunch of other things online that you could probably find. This is my design. I dreamt this and I made it my own. I made my own little thing here and I'm very proud of it and it's fun and I love it and you can do anything with this. So. There's my little umbrella that we will be making on Monday, 4.30 to 5.30, with kindergarten to second graders. Please register with Art Attack Studios LLC, and that way we can have some classes, and I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure classes are only $10 per student right now, per artist. So, if you want to take ad uh, advantage of that before... The prices go up for summer camp then let's let's get to it we only have a month left or two months left i think until summer camp starts so i'd love to build my class and have you guys ready for the summer because this summer we're going to be doing lots of fun things and it's going to be great so here's my umbrellas there's my rainbow and there's my cloudy thunderstorm and i'm really excited so anyway guys, thank you so much if you joined in. I saw a few people popping in and out, so that's awesome. I'll link the video that I uh, watched for the um, hexagon folding thing, because that was actually really helpful. I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. Um, I will also try and link the uh, lesson plans that I pulled this and the thunderstorm painting thing from um, as well. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week when it's time to plan some more. Hopefully I'll see you in class. Bye, everybody.